Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Recently, the KCMO City Council approved a resolution directing the city to reject all future investment in fossil fuel companies. Also, within five years, the city will divest all current fossil fuel assets from the KCMO Employees Retirement System and the Firefighters Pension System. Fourth District at Large Councilwoman Catherine Shields and Mayor Sly James co-introduced this resolution. The City Council's endorsement of divestment sends a strong message that they understand the seriousness of the climate crisis and it reinforces the city's continued commitment to sustainability. Although the weather so far this winter has been more delightful than frightful, it's important to be prepared for snow and extreme cold. The following tips will help keep you safe and help make the city's snow operations run smoothly and efficiently. Avoid parking on city streets when it snows, but if you must, please use the north or west side of the street so snow removal crews can do their job. If vehicles are parked on both sides of a narrow street, it may not leave enough space for a snowplow to get through and that street might be skipped. Do not park on signed emergency snow routes. Vehicles parked on those routes may be ticketed or towed during snowstorms. To report slick spots or missed streets, please wait until the next business day after the snow stops falling to call 311 or tweet to at KCMO311. This allows snow removal crews adequate time to complete multiple passes on all assigned snow routes. If you must go out during storms, keep water and blankets or an extra coat in your car for warmth and keep the gas tank full. Make sure your vehicle has adequate tire tread to avoid getting stuck. For more information and tips, visit KCMO's snow webpage at kcmo.gov and search snow. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, here to give you a glimpse of some of the upcoming events taking place for your family at city facilities during this winter season. Mark your calendar for the annual 2016 Mid-America RV Show coming to Bartle Hall January 14th through the 17th. The Mid-America RV Show is the largest consumer show dedicated to the RVing lifestyle and everything associated with it. RVing enthusiasts can check out the newest products and services on the market. Whether you are on the market for a motorhome, custom motor coach, or pop-up camper, you will find it at the Mid-America RV Show. For additional information, go to gsevents.com. Your outdoor adventure continues with four days of boating and outdoor fun at the Kansas City Boat and Sports Show from January 21st through January 24th. Whether you're an avid outdoorsman or just looking for a way to escape winter for the day, this is your show. This annual four-day event turns Bartle Hall into a one-stop marketplace for outdoor fun with activities for all ages. For additional information, go to KansasCitySportsShow.com. Fans can celebrate baseball in a big league way at the Royals Fan Fest at Kansas City Convention Center's Bartle Hall. Meet your favorite World Series team at the autograph sessions featuring current and former Royals. Enjoy the interactive games for fans of all ages, main stage programs, and more. The club's 2015 Major League Award winners will also be recognized during the event. A portion of the proceeds will again benefit Royal Charities. For additional information, go to royals.com slash fanfest. These are just a few of the many events the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities offers our community. To learn about even more events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. During this time of the holidays and the flu season, we want to talk about the importance of hand washing. Hand washing is important to keep from spreading disease and to keep everyone in your family and your friends healthy. Hand washing is very important, especially when we're dealing with children as well. We want to make sure we have the kids wash their hands for a certain amount of time. So we'll go through the steps and talk about the best way to wash our hands. We'll start with the warm water, wet your hands, 
Use soap. We recommend using a liquid soap or a foam soap. Scrub your hands for 20 seconds. The friction from washing your hands with the soap and the water is what helps to get the bacteria off of your hands. Remember to wash around the tops of your hands, in between your fingers, as well as under your fingernails. It's sometimes fun to have the children say their ABCs or sing a song, something like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, to remind them to wash for at least 20 seconds. After that, you wanna rinse your hands for at least 10 seconds, get a towel, preferably a paper towel or something that's disposable, dry your hands, and then turn off the water. Hand sanitizer is not the most effective way of killing germs on your hand. Hand washing is always the best. If you're unable to get to a sink with soap and water, you can use hand sanitizer. So always remember, wash your hands to keep from spreading illness. For additional information on city services, search our website, kcmo.gov. Search FYI KC. Polar bears are great ambassadors for zoos to tell the story of uh, what's happening with the polar ice and uh, Nikita has been our, our uh, great ambassador here at the Kansas City Zoo for a number of years. Uh, he joined us as a kind of a tiny little guy, we thought at that time 600 pounds and he's up over 1200 pounds now and unfortunately though uh, Nikita does have to leave us and uh, we have to send him to another uh, zoo in North Carolina where we're going to pair him up with a, a younger female in hopes that uh, he can pass along his genes and create some little cubs that will help populate uh, other zoos in North America and create more little ambassadors. Nikita was assigned uh, to the Kansas City Zoo after we opened uh, Polar Bear Passage. Uh, that's sort of how it works in the, in the zoo world, that uh, there's assignments and transfers and and uh, it happens all the time with a number of animals. Now we're at a point that uh, we brought in a female, Berlin, a few years ago. Uh, she had kind of a, a, a long story, long history, and had been with a male, never produced cubs. She was at the Duluth, Minnesota Zoo, and uh, they had some flooding that happened. She was able to swim out. The SSP took a look at that kind of North American zoo population and saw Bikita was here without a female. So we paired him up and uh, she did come in to her heat cycles uh, all, all the breeding seasons that she was here and it just, uh, just wasn't meant to be. Uh, so then what do we do with Nikita? He's a, he's a young bear, uh, he, he is uh, a potential breeder and uh, again SSP looked around the country and said, uh, you know, we've got this 14-year-old bear, female, young female. She hasn't had cubs, but she is in the prime of her, her, her breeding age. And uh, the best thing for polar bears in North America, in the zoos, is to move Nikita to North Carolina to pair up with her. Get a lot of questions, well, why didn't you just bring the female to Kansas City? Uh, pragmatically, scientifically, Transferring the females, it's best if she can remain settled in and not disturb her. So Nikita's going to uh, be here at the zoo through the New Year's uh, weekend, and uh, we're arranging to transport him uh, to North Carolina uh, during that probably that first full week in January. How do you get a polar bear from Kansas City to North Carolina? That's always a question that comes up. And basically, we will uh, have a refrigerated truck. We'll turn the temperature down about as low as it'll go in there, the colder the better. And uh, we'll have a chase vehicle with veterinarians and keepers. Uh, we'll have a, a closed circuit camera on him in the, in the semi-trailer uh, that they can watch uh, in, in the vehicle. Stop probably every hour or two hours uh, to check on him. So as they're cruising down the interstate, they'll radio each other, hey, let's pull into this rest stop. They'll open the door, check him, make sure he's okay. If he needs a little water or something, uh, they'll give it to him. So we're, we're, we're gonna have Nikita's going away party on uh, December 19th. Then we'll have a day filled with activities in and around the polar bear exhibit. Uh, we'll have special things that we're throwing to Nikita through the day. There'll be f some photo ops and uh, just a lot of activities and sort of celebrate his time here in Kansas City and uh, throw him a heck of a bon voyage party. So Berlin. Berlin is a, a really, I think, a really good looking bear. We know when uh, Nikita is no longer here that Berlin will probably come a little more out of her shell. 
she'll spend more time outside up towards the windows and uh, we'll try to do some things to entice her to do that. She does enjoy swimming and a lot of people think she never goes in the pool. Well, uh, the, the bear that she lived with in, in Duluth, the male, uh, every time she would get in the water, he would chase her out. So uh, she has always been a little leery of Nikita when she's in the water and he gets in the pool. I think she remembers those days that she got chased out of the pool. You know, we, we built the uh, polar bear passage with the intent of using polar bears to, to teach. Uh, they're fun to watch, but also to teach about uh, what's happening on our, our delicate planet. Uh, our intent is to always have bears. Uh, Berlin is kind of in her, uh, I guess, social security years, for lack of better term. So, uh, you know, we're always talking to our SSP uh, coordinators and saying, you know, what's next? And while they'll, they'll never make a promise, uh, we're pretty confident that we'll always have uh, polar bears here to enjoy and, and learn from. It's always a new adventure at the Kansas City Zoo. Setting up your Christmas tree is always a highlight of the holiday season, and disposing of your tree doesn't have to be a chore. Natural Christmas trees can be recycled at the city's three leaf and brush drop-off centers. Go to 11660 North Main Street, 1815 North Shoto Traffic Way, or 10301 Raytown Road. The North Shoto Traffic Way and North Main Street sites are open Mondays through Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The Raytown Road site is open on Saturdays only. Be sure to take off all the lights, tinsel, and other decorations. There is a $5 tree recycling fee from Mondays through Fridays. Tree recycling is free for Kansas City residents on Saturdays only, and do bring your proof of residency. If you have Christmas lights that no longer work, you can recycle them at locations throughout the city, including Walmart. For a complete list of locations which will accept lights, visit southeasternenterprises.org. Please be aware that for the Christmas and New Year's holiday, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed on Friday, December 25th and Friday, January 1st. Curbside trash and recycling collection will be delayed one day for residents whose normal trash pickup day is on that Friday. Their trash will be picked up on Saturday during each of those weeks. Monday through Thursday collection will not be affected. Also, the week following Christmas is a trash amnesty period. During this week, residents may set out more than two bags of trash without having to buy those extra trash bag tags. No hazardous ways, bulky items, or leaf and brush will be collected at that time. And remember, gift wrap goes in the trash, not the recycling bin. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. And keep in mind, here at City Communications, we want to thank you for watching Channel 2 all year long. We hope you have a great holiday season and a happy new year. Please enjoy this video montage we've put together of all the great events we've been covering during the past year. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great new year. I'm representing Got it? Tech 9? Let's go! And you might see our new street sweeper that we have co-branded with the Royals and we're pretty excited about it. Awesome. We love this machine because this, what this really proves is that the Royals know how to sweep teams. We know how to sweep streets. Kansas City does have an amazing amount of talent here and letting the nation know that we are uh, a tech force to be reckoned with. I want to I want to take a moment and ask you if you would please just look around and take it all in. All right, I mean seriously, look at this. We got cranes and stuff in the air down here. Okay, uh, that's something special is happening in this city tonight.
Mayor Sly James and City Manager Troy Schulte unveiled the city's 2014 through 15 citizen satisfaction survey results during its salute to services last week. This city is uh, driven by the smart use of city data and citizen feedback. That's why this citizen survey is so important to us. Why can't City Hall data be seen as art? I've been drawing and painting my whole life, and now this art of data is like just a wonderful opportunity. Well, this is something no other city has ever done before. My job as an analyst has an artistic aspect to it. You will experience engagement with your city government in a completely new way. What would, what would the average person, how would they really like to see this chart? And I'm thrilled today to tell you and to be here to announce Kansas City's own Major League Baseball Urban Youth Academy at Parade Park. To I am, uh... Today we're celebrating and announcing that through a public-private partnership, we're ready to move forward on an 800-room Hyatt Hotel Convention Center hotel uh, right across the street. And I'm telling you... Well, again, I can't... Uh echo enough, uh, thank everybody enough for their perseverance on this and I want to want to thank this young lady right here Mrs. Powell about six years ago uh, she came out and she said I want to take you out on a tour and we're gonna go look at all the grocery stores and we spent about an afternoon just driving around and that's why today on behalf of the US Department of Housing and Urban Development I'm proud to announce that we're awarding a 30 million dollar grant to bring your vision to life in grade school, we learned red means stop and green means go. But what goes into maintaining 600 traffic signals every year? Come on, let's go. Take a look at how the city brings it all together. Hey, I want to let you know something. Kansas City, Missouri employees are up to the challenge and we're going to kick some corporate butt. 